Hello and welcome again to Behind the Words, the literary angle, a program that speaks to you in the voice of literature. It helps flip through the pages of your work of art. It analyzes all the things that you have done, particularly in terms of writing. I'm Hassan Abdusalam, and with me is the familiar face of the <laughs> prolific writer, Mr. Eric Andova Nsota. He's here with us again to analyze the book that we have been analyzing, which is The Ghost Gun. The Ghost Gun is a book written by Mr. Eric himself in 2015, and we are here analyzing this book. We are beginning to flip through the pages of this book to see how you know, big the picture is behind the words he has written. Mr. Eric, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Sir. Welcome again to this uh, wonderful episode of Behind the Words. Behind the Words is a program, you know, for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> As a man of letters, you yes, know. Sure, yes. Sure. Um, Mr. Eric, we have been, you know, flipping through the pages of this very book and uh, we have not really gone far in you know analyzing you know the book and trying to see how we can bring out the big picture behind the words that you have inscribed in this book now let's continue with uh you know some of the chapters we have been uh, reading out some of the parts of the novels you know particularly we read out a poem in this novel on page 12 which you analyzed yes now let's move on to another poem on page 51 right. let me open to page 51 of the book let's read out the poem on page 51 that is part six of the book i read okay what an evening the sound of guns was everywhere the village of duku was trapped. I hope I, 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 I got yes, it right. Yes. Duku, right? Yes. Yes. The village of Duku was trapped. We have a mournful sigh scene. Boom, 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 boom. The heart pants at the sound of the blast. Oh, God, when will all this end? This is the fifth day now. You think you are free. Oh, no, you are not. You are trapped. A prisoner in your own home. The song is everywhere. What next? What a food, a hiding place, far from the sound of the gun. Yes. The the, the poem is um, is complicated <laughs> <laughs> because we have used so many figures of uh, of speech here. You know, I could see um, I could see personification mm -hmm. i could see you know onomatopoeia yes i could see you know so many of them yes yes so mr eric <laughs> let's see the big picture behind this the, this poem okay as i said earlier you see all the happening in the society and i say there is a day that i believe that people will rise up and they will try to change the whole and circumstances surrounding us. So, in the novel, here the poem is talking about the protagonist of the novel at a point where people were so much down in the society and they ask themselves and they say, look, we have to put an end to this. Who is this unknown gun that is killing people, killing people in our society? And for us to make sure that this cease, we need to put uh, action in front so that we can be able to address this issue. And they were able to organize people. They summon courage and they go into war. And you can see from the opening of the poem. Yes. What an evening. What an evening. The sound of guns were everywhere. As nobody could hear anything except boom, boom. So... At that point in time, because at a time, people in the society begin to know, especially the youth, that, okay, there are people behind this. Just the way we say, there is a ghost behind the gun. gun. Yes. So, some people were trying to know who are those people behind this. And to a point, they come to realize that, of course, there are 
some people that are following this uh, crisis. So they went into conflict so that they could tackle and address this issue. So at that, uh, that day, they went into war in a village called Duku to tackle or to capture the ghost to go because everything was becoming too much for them to bear. So they went into war and they start exchanging the dead stick, which is called the gun. So they started fighting. And the picture, or oh, the picture behind what I'm trying to establish here is that no matter what is going on in the society, there will be a day that things will change. People will rise up and they will try to change the whole thing. And that was exactly what happened. They went into war and they exchanged guns. They mm. fought until they were able to capture the ghost gun. Okay. And as we go through, you will see how the events are fought. Okay, but here you said in the second stanza, yes. after the, the boom, 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 yes. you said the heart pants at the sound of the blast. Oh God, when will all this end? This is the fifth day now. So this is the fifth day that there was that violence. Yes. When they went there, they started fighting. And when they started fighting, even the ghost gun was shocked. That is the people behind the killing. They were not they were they were they least, they, they were. Yes, they were yes. surprised at the actions of yes. the of the people, of the villagers, right? Yes, yes. Because they never knew there was going to be a reprisal action. Exactly. Wow. So they were just sleeping and the what they could hear is the sound of gun. And it continued for five days. Nobody, even in fact, the sound of gun was so sound and allowed that even the trees and the grasses in the village could feel the sound. That is to show you how tense the sound was. There was no any cool atmosphere. Everywhere was tense. Wow. Okay. But the last stanza here, you said the song is everywhere. Yes. The song, that is the sound of the gun. The gun. Yes. What next? Water food, a hiding place. Hmm? On this, uh, in this poem, hmm? water food, a hiding place. Hmm? There's, there's, um, there is a way you have written this. Hmm? Water, hmm? then, hmm? Uh, like a hyphen. Yes. Then food, hmm? then a hyphen. Hmm. A hiding place. A hiding place. What brought about that? You made it look like, um, a compound word? Yes. That is taking side by side the events of what was occurring. You know, in the course of conflict, you know, there are sometimes people suffer. You understand? Yes. People suffer. I, when I was trying to read emphasis, you know, in written words, there is extension of intention. Okay. And that is what I was trying to paint. So you extended your intention? Yes. Wow. To see that in the course of this, <laughs> Those who are there, you know, sometimes in the course of conflict, sometimes even the innocent people serve as a scapegoat. True. They suffer. Yeah. And in like, that, um, they call it uh, collateral damage. Yes, yes. So, at that point in time, even the so-called people that were following the crisis, they could not have a place of them to go and hide. Everywhere was hot for everybody. A typical example is just the issue of uh, COVID-19 today. Everybody, all of us who are in this country, we are facing the same thing. So that was exactly what happened. In circumstances like that, everybody will face the same situation. There is no uh, room for you to go out. Everybody was captured. Everybody was passing through everything. No food for anybody to eat. When you hear the sound of gun persistent, there is no stop to eat. How can you even, you can't even think of eating. Or even if you want to, where can you find that? So that was exactly what was happening. Still on this very yes. stanza, All right. Mr. Eric. Mm? You said water food. Mm? Water food. Are you trying to make it a compound word? Yes. Or there is a reason. <laughs> you know, because you said you extended your intention. Yes. Now, your intention here was to tell the world mm? that water and food is very important to yeah. everybody. All everybody. And sundry. Yes. Now, but they could not even think of this too. Yes. They needed to just seek asylum. Yes. You know, a hiding place. Now, my question is this. It's still on it. Water, food, a hiding place. Yes. Water, food. Why did you put water and food? You made it 
a, a compound, compound word. Two words. Yeah. All right. I was trying to lay emphasis, making okay. it a compound word. So, so that, draw the attention of your reader yes, towards it. Yes. Wow. So that I will take them side by side by how I was able to coin the word so that I will take them along. <laughs> by separating the words, it could have uh, so many meaning and interpretation. Okay. But when you make it a compound word, the idea becomes as if it is a collective thing and you bury it into one. So that we try to understand rather than separating them. So when you make it comp uh, compound words, it is very easy for people to understand and to you carry them along. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is literature. You know, sometimes when I see literature, uh, yeah, I've been writing, but not this deep. This is the deep. <laughs> you see, one, one thing about writing is writers has this power yes. to manipulate words yeah because you play with these words at your fingertips as when you are writing sometimes i even coined these words you understand yeah so when Just you are you writing the, the writers have the license yes so you can step out of the circle hmm? to create your own your own so sometimes and remember in in writing we have words like the connotative usage so Sometimes, if you look the word like food, water, all these things, it could not be exact meaning as it is used in the dictionary. I'm yeah. trying to use it connotatively so that I can yes. give people the big picture behind the, the words. words. Wow. Wow. So now I continue. Far from the sound of the gun. Water, food, a hiding place. Far from the sound of the gun. Hmm? Which means, obviously, they have moved out of the village. Yes. Trying to seek, you know, uh, comfort. comfort. Yes. Wow. This poem is a wonderful one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Eric, yes. we'll go out on a quick break. We'll come back and see how we can, you know, continue on the same track. Okay. And I hope you are with us. We are discussing the ghost gun. We started the ghost gun, you know, you know, like uh, two episodes ago. Yet we are still on it. We have not really gone far because we really need to know the real picture, the big picture behind the words. We'll go out on a quick break. We'll come back and continue. Welcome back. This is Behind the Words, and we are discussing The Ghost Gun, a book written by Mr. Eric. He's right here in the studio with me, analyzing this book. We are trying to see how we can see the big picture, the beautiful picture behind the words. We have gone through the very first poem on this very episode, and the poem is wonderful. In fact, Mr. Eric has really, really done a very good job on that very poem. I suggest you look for this book open to page 50 and see how you can read this poem and digest it. Welcome back, Thank Mr. You. Eric. Now let's move on. Let's go to page 52. Page 52 and the third paragraph on that page. I'll read the top paragraph. Right. You wrote, The ghost gone ordered his warriors as the sound of guns became inevitable and repeatable. Looking back, the naive war proved a terrible disaster and, one, and was inter interpreted with plausibility as a horrified plot by the Aje. Revenge shed out to the blood splattered troops as misfortune arrived and great danger threatened the village. It's confusing. Oh, <laughs> you see. <laughs> Most of the times, yes. the hope that we are digging, we should also remember that this same hole will be left open for us to fall into. For us to fall into. <laughs> it's true. That is, whatsoever that goes wrong, we come, you come Yeah, we come around, obviously. You understand? Yes. So, sometimes we are thinking that 
all those things we are doing, the big question is who is fooling who? Because it's what you sow that is you what reap. you reap. So on this very occasion, this youth, the sound of God become intensified. So everybody was passing through the same thing that a common person could also pass through in the society. You know, in one front, when you don't need to know who manufactured the bullet before you shoot, and everybody, the bullet will not identify whether you are so so so, or this is your personality, or it don't even care your profile. And that is exactly what happened. Everybody was dancing the same music that was played by the God. Everybody mm. was suffering, was passing through the same thing. People who are behind the killing of the innocent soul were also responding to the sons of the gods, just as the common people were also doing so. And that was the picture that I was trying to create. But why did you call it the naive war? Why is it naive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a naive word because people that were involved here, they were the least that one could expect. Wow. You understand? So the majority of Sometimes, them went into the war with great naivety. Yes. They never knew yes. that was coming. That was coming. And it was coming from people that you don't even think that they have the capacity to be able to confront you. In situations like this, sometimes you will be doing something and you will be expecting that maybe people that at the end could be able to spring into action. It could be people of your caliber. True. But in that scenario, it wasn't like that. The people that you could not even think of, that is to say that one day, people that were even thinking or that they could not even rise up and change the entire situation we are passing through, they could be the same people that you will see. That is why it is not even good to undermine people's ability. Sometimes even the common almagery that you see on the street, don't even ignore them because you don't know what or where they might be tomorrow and they may turn things around. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but here you said, revenge shed out to the blood splattered troops mm -hmm. as misfortune arrived and greed Greater, great danger hmm? threatened the village. Yes. Now, there's a question I want to ask here. I'm a, bit, a little bit confused, and I believe my viewers will also <laughs> want me to ask this question. Yes. You said revenge shed out hmm? to the blood splattered troops, hmm? which means a revenge hmm? was meted out to them. Yes. Good. Now, as misfortune arrived hmm? upon them or upon the villagers? Upon those who are behind. The ghost gun. Yes. Good. And great danger threatened the village. Yes. How? Okay. <laughs> you see, anything that starts up is grief. You start your life from down to up. True. You understand? So, in a village, it's, it's, there are different people living there. And in terms of eventuality, Everybody passed through the same situation. Now, in the course of tackling the ghost gun, yeah. trying to address the issue, so many lives were affected, even the common people in the village. And if you could see from the poor, water and hide, um, food becomes a hiding place. Not only everybody, whether you are innocent or you are not, you suffer the same thing. So the whole village was capsized. Everything was upside down and people were passing through a lot. And just the way I say, in one front, the, gun, the bullet did not even remember who is who. Everybody, you, it faced you and it will meet you straight. So the society, everybody was passing through the same situation, the same difficulties. Nobody was paying out. And that was the essence behind what I was trying to Exam. <laughs> wow, this is this is wonderful. <laughs> All right, Mr. Eric, let's move on to page fifty-nine right. of this book. Mm -hmm. Fifty-nine. And I hope um, the viewers, if you know you have this book and you're watching this, please, as I flip through the pages, you also flip because I am right now on page fifty-nine. 
it should be on page 59 too <laughs> <laughs> all right on page 59 we have the second paragraph on page 59 i'll read there really should be time for everything time to be brave time to get down to serious work time to be tensed up and time to relax time of bitter grief and time of sure grief time to ascend the hill and time to descend the slope a time to arrive and a time to depart all things at the appropriate time this is wonderful you know why it is wonderful because I could see time, 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 everywhere, you know, in this paragraph. Yes. Why so much emphasis on time? Okay. So you see, that is called allusion. Allusion, yes. Yes. And allusion simply means it is a reference given to something out of immediate scope of what has been presented. And it is a biblical allusion. It biblical? Was, yes. It was taken okay. from Ecclesia, from chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Hmm. Now, if you, it is a biblical allusion, and if you read through from chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8, you could see everything has its own time. God made things beautiful in their own time. Whatsoever it is happening in the society, it's just a matter of time. The difference between today and tomorrow is simply a matter of time. You sure. understand? Yes. So that is just it. Whatsoever we are passing through, it is just a matter of time. There will be a time that everything that we are, all this, the issue of kidnapping, banditry, rape, and all these things, just give it time. Everything will stop when the time comes. And that is exactly what happened. These people have been experiencing hardship, unwanted killing. People were just dying day in, day out. But they keep hope alive. And there comes a day that everything was taken off from them. The way people are dying and all this, and the youth were able to stand out. That, okay, see, this, we need to put an end to this. And that is why I say, D, I was laying emphasis on time, time. There will be time that that is your time. You feel that the evil you are doing, but you remember that the evil that men do live after them. So the same thing will still come back to you. So there is time for you to be laughing, to be thinking that, okay, I'm being pushing people to this, that, but there will also be a time that everything will come back to you. And that was the time. That day, everything was seized and things were able to return to normalcy. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Here you said time of bitter grief hmm? and time of sure grief. Yes. I want you to, to draw a line, you know, uh, you know a dichotomy between okay. a bitter grief Okay. and sure grief because obviously both of them are grief yes so do we have bitter grief and sure grief <laughs> or an on, on, unsure grief all right you see one good thing in writing and one of the ingredients of writers is figurative expression, expression yes and sometimes we use osmoro there's a figure of speech that is called the osmoro True. When two opposite words are placed side by side, side. like when you say bitter love, yes. bitter is a different thing. Love is a different thing. Painful pleasure. Painful pleasure. Thank yes. you. These words, they are often used side by side. Okay, there is time for soul. And there's a time that people will be passing through a lot. But there is also a time for them to rejoice, to feel that kind of excitement. And that was the picture. Wow. So there is there is the picture of a bitter truth mm. and that of a sure wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to page sixty six again of this book sixty six. Okay, page sixty six, the first paragraph, mm. and I'll read. No one understands what is wrong with the elite in the society. Mm. Instead of working. For the welfare of the people, they are always groaning and tearing the entire society apart like hungry dogs who see a piece of meat at that same time and same minute. At least the ancestors tried to make the society rich in the past 
by making war on weaker. War on weaker. We'll come, to, we'll come back to that. Let me finish. They tried to live at peace with the surrounding people. They left their doors open to all. People in the society took what they wanted, ate and drank, peace, and left their excre excrement <laughs> on doorsteps. Okay. Let's see the picture behind this. Okay. You see, the society we live in it's such a funny society because if you look at it from this angle people where you are especially the elites the offices you are occupying remember that people put you there you understand yes. during election there are people who came out vote for you and they have their own needs and their needs must be met. It's either they are suffering from one thing or the other. And they want people that can remake or change the situation, what they are passing through. But it's very unfortunate that the same people you elect them or you vote for, having full confidence in them that they can deliver and they can change things the way you are anticipating or thinking. Once they get there, the whole this thing will change. People have become so much, or oh, let me say, people have become people have become unbecoming in a way that sometimes people who push them to climb the ladder they tend to forget about them completely. The elites are very funny. It is only the time. That they wanted something from you that they can come down to their, your level. Yes. Once they get it, you become just a rock that they can use in just cleaning their shoes. Wow. Okay, Mr. Eric, let's go out on another quick break. We'll come back. I still have some um, clarifications I want to get from you still on this very paragraph. It's okay. Yes. And I hope you're still with us. This is the ghost gun we are treating here. And the program is behind the words. We'll go out on a quick break we'll come back and take it from here Welcome back. I hope you are getting the analysis, the big picture behind the words of the, the, the ghost gun. You know, the ghost gun is a novel written by Mr. Eric in 2015. And this book, up until now, if you read it, it will be as if it was written last night. Mr. Eric, you're welcome. Thank you. And let me go back to this very same paragraph. You said, they tried to live at peace with the surrounding people. That's the villagers? Yes. Good. They left their doors open to all. Still the villagers? Still the villagers. People in the society took what they wanted. Ate and drank. Pissed and left their excrement on doorstep. This is the peak of freedom. Exactly. <laughs> the peak of freedom. freedom. Everybody was enjoying and that is how society should be. There should be no, there should be no elements of hanky panky there. Everybody should be at peace. You go to your neighbor, you knock, he open the doors. You're hungry, he serves you with food. Everybody in a this situation, that is what should be obtainable in a society. But unfortunately, in trying to live that kind of life, there are some unwanted elements that try to make things very difficult for people. Especially an attack the elite. People who should have been the limelight for people to look at because you are there and people are looking up to you. You are just a small god for them. You are being used so that you can change the kind of lifestyle they are going through. But once you are there, instead of to do what is expected of you, 
you will not do the opposite, which is more of irony. Because in this kind of situation, the opposite always seems to become the case. Because they have high hope in you. But once you are there, you tend to forget about them. And people who, okay, elect you, they start suffering. And you are there, enjoying. It becomes so much so that the way we see people operating in the society today is just as if they are in a game of football. You pass people who you know. Other people that you don't directly connected or indirectly connected with them. You don't have any business with them. So you play, you give your neighbor, your brother, your wife, your sister, don't lie. What about other people? So you should be able to be, when you are dealing with people, you should be able to deal with people irrespective of where they are coming from or tribalism or anything. Just deal with people because we are all human. Put that first. And in doing that, you will make sure that you call everybody along and everybody will enjoy all this killing, this, this, that. Nobody will be doing that because everybody feels as if I belong. I know the mind of the viewers may be, you know, boggled mm -hmm. by this very caption, this, this very, the one I've just read out, mm -hmm. where you said they tried to live at peace with the surrounding people, mm -hmm. you know, and they left their doors open to mm -hmm. all. People in the society took what they wanted, mm -hmm. ate and drank, mm -hmm. paced, and left their excrement mm -hmm. on doorstep. Mm -hmm. Now, do we, in, like from your explanation, mm -hmm. it is an, this is what an ideal society should look like. Yes, you understand. But do we have such society in this world that is looking like this? Because this is peak of freedom. <laughs> and it, it, is, it is obvious that there is no law guiding these people. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> yes, in the sense that before now, there is an article which was published, uh, which I wrote was published around 2018. Okay. Recycling the Recycle. I think I read the article. Yes. Written by you. You yes. could see, before now, even people that were having the power or the chance to lead people, you could see, some were 20 something years, 30 years, and all that. People were. There is no demarcation that, okay, you must attain this kind of age, age before you can be able to have your own share to maybe govern your own people or to partake in election. But today, what is happening? People were at any age, there was no age bracket. Young people were also having their own portion, even in politics. They have their own share in politics. But today, can you see that it is not obtainable? Look at from the top down, you could see the list and the category and the age bracket of people that are occupying this position. Some even want to be there for ages and they want to be there for life. They don't want anybody to come. And even if you, they will say, ah, you are too young for this and that. <laughs> but this before, these were not like this. That is to say that if then everybody has the freedom, at 30, I know that I can also pick a ticket aspire any position I want to, and I can be voted to into power. But today, at 20, they will ask you, what did you know? Except even if you are uh, given the grace to do that, it will depend on the kind of Godfatherism that you have, who will be able to back you up. And it is not going to be easy, even if you have them. So that was the kind of the society during our ancestors or our forefathers, they were enjoying this kind of privilege. People have this kind of, there was a kind of open door to all. Yeah. You know, even <laughs> if you don't know Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, you can still get what you want. People have this kind of sympathy. Our leaders there, they see people and they, this, a common of this common uh, relationship that exists that cement people together. But today, that common enmity that create people together is being shattered, is being stolen. It is no more there. If you approach Mr. A, sir, I need this, this, this. Nobody wants to look at you. They first, who are you? 
The question is not who are you, not for you to explain okay, this is what I can do. As they, they want to know whether yeah, background. If, yes, yes, whether we share some kind of a similarities or there's something similar that is tying two of us together. Are you my brother? What tribe are you? We are which state are you from? True. But these are questions that should not come into play. We don't even look at the potential. Maybe before now, your perception, what you are facing in the labor market today, will yeah, change yes. your orientation. What what we are all undergraduate, we were thinking how once you have your uh, first degree, as in things are going to be better. But when we now after our youth service, when you enter into the low, uh, labor market today, the whole thing changed. We now have a deeper thinking that oh, this is not what we were thinking. So. We should be able to create an environment that people who are behind us, we should be able to see, let's see as a perfect example, people who are leading us, they are our so-called elite, they should be able to create this thing so that our younger ones should be able to emulate and copy them. That could create a society that everybody will live and will be happy and laugh. Okay. Um, still still, still in the same paragraph, still in it. Um, there's there's uh, a place um, i was reading like while you were explaining um you said at least the ancestors tried to make the society rich in the past by making war on weaker war on weaker what do you mean okay today the kind of news that you are being exposed to or you listen to did you had this kind of experience before maybe at 18 20 or 22 of age the kind of tension that you are seeing in our country today these things were not obtainable true society our society was even if there are things like this they were not too pronounced i know uh, violent is inevitable in the society it, there is a way that even if you are not happy, there is a way you can table your own uh, grievances that people will understand. Bef around 1999, 2000 down, you hardly hear uh, issues of Boko Haram, kidnapping, and no, even if things will, you could not see them at this level. But before now, this has metamorphosis into what Sometimes I even like adjectives to describe them. Because the more you see, the less you understand. Every day things are becoming more and more complex to a point that one seems not to understand what is happening or where the country is even going. Okay, but um, still on this, you said, because um, you said at least the, the ancestors tried to make the society rich. The ancestors. You're referring to the past, the, the, the abilities of, of our forefathers yes. by, you know, the, the abilities they, 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 of making the society a rich one, uh, a, a close to perfect society for us to live in. Exactly. Now, in the past, by making war, making war on weaker, which means there was still war. They were still war. Yes. But the war was meted out to the weaker societies, yes. right? Okay. Now you see there will there will always be war. But the manner in which we approach and we try to settle them, it's important. Before now, our traditional rulers, when they come out and say, even if there's any issue, and they will come and say, Please, my people, stop this, this, that, they listen to them. But today, does that mean we don't have the same people we have in our society? People we listen to, people we respect, but we are those people. Why would they come out and say, look, people should stop this, and we listen to them? They don't even have a voice. Even our so-called traditional, they will come out and say, see, they are trying. But all their attempts have been proof abortive. No more even respect. People don't even respect, the young people don't even respect. They will tell you, that was your time. Now is our time. And if you could read the trouble with Nigeria, that was exactly what Achebe was trying to establish. He says in the book, 
people like Mala Aminu Kanu lives here, and things will never be the same. And you could see today what is happening. Things are not the same. If you read the blaming soul, or oh, fire at my backyard, by uh, Ali Kamal, he also pointed this fact today. Fire at my backyard. When I look at the title of the book, I say, wow, <laughs> I must go through this book. And from beginning to the end, I was I love the book. Because some of these things that are established here were also articulated in that novel. And this is the kind of things that we are trying to stop. Trying to establish this thing that, look, things were better. If we could, history is part of us. And for you to make the society we live in better, you must understand history. Yeah, we can expunge history, obviously. Yes. You know, that is it. What are the things that people were doing back then that they were getting it? What is wrong now that we cannot get the same result? We are still in Nigeria. The whole, the same soil that was there then, we are still living in the same hamlet. But why is it that our ancestors were getting things right and we, we cannot get things right now? Then we can go back to history, read, understand, and then we can be able to apply the same approaches they were using, that they adapted that time. That if we apply it with all sense of responsibility and sincerity, then at least we can have the answers and we can get things right. Wow. So this paragraph is so, so catchy. I just it's, don't know. <laughs> and that is always, that is why I like this program. Yes, yes. Behind the world lies a big yes, picture. Yes, lies the big picture. All yes. right. Uh, Mr. Eric, let's go out on a very quick break. We'll come back and see how we can round it off. Okay? okay. And I hope you're with us. We have been discussing behind the words, the behind the words, you know. And uh, right now on our table is The Ghost Gun, written by Mr. Eric. And he's right here in the studio with me. We'll go out on a quick break. We'll come back. Take it from here. Welcome back to Behind the Words. I hope you're still glued to your television set because we are still in the studio. I'm still with Mr. Eric, the writer of The Ghost Gun and a host of other novels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are still discussing The Ghost Gun. We are still trying to see how we can bring out the big picture behind the words for you to understand and for you to see clearly. Mr. Eric, you're welcome back. Let's go you know, straight to page still on the same page page 66 but the last uh paragraph yes the last paragraph i'll read Sorry. look there late you are old you're going to die soon not to leave and eat the fruits of evil you planted at the backyard for the society remember people fought to protect and pushed you through the ladder to where you are today but you made us warriors when we were not prepared, and so the energetic men's hearts were lost to a hole where no one could trace it no more. There's a big picture. Yes, there's a big picture behind the words. Yes. All right, you see, the elites, that was the protagonist that was talking in a flashback. The people, I don't know whether people have conscience the way I have. <laughs> I don't know. If you have conscience, remember people who push you there. They voted for you. They have things that they are aspiring for and they want you to do for them. Instead, you are there creating problems for them. And one thing that is very unfamiliar is some of this problem that people are creating sometimes they don't live to witness what they are planting for people sometimes i wish that what you will do you will live and witness what will be the end result or the outcome of it yes 
But unfortunately, sometimes we don't live to tell the story at the end. Yeah, that's why they said the evil that men do leave yes. after them. Sometimes it may not even, if you have conscience, know that you have children or you have grand-grandchildren. What you will do, they will, even if you are not there to reap what you saw, they will definitely come across. And that is why we should be able to, when we are given the mandate to govern the affairs of our own nation, we should first of all ask ourselves, what am I going, what kind of legacy am I going to leave for my people that will benefit them from generation on board? But we tend to forget to ask ourselves this kind of questions. And at the end, we'll be creating a society that is very hostile for people. That even if we live, our own people will not be facing, will still be facing the same situation. Today, if you want to travel from here to Abuja by road, you see how uh, people used to be scared because of maybe kidnapping and all these things. But one good thing is that it will not speak whether if oh, those kidnappers, they will not ask you, okay, are you the son of the son of the soil? Or are you Mr. So so and so? No. These are the even the kind of people they are looking for. Because if you just kidnap a common person and you're asking for 10 million, where can you get the 10 million? And sometimes I ask people who are busy stealing millions, 15 billions, this, this, that. These people are still empty psychologically. Because how can you, a single person, make away with 15 billion or trillion of naira? How can a single person make away with 15 billion? That means you are still empty. Because if you are not empty, by the time you think, okay, Mr. A, Mr. B also need this. This is a money that is meant to serve everybody. But a single individual is thinking of making a way, diverting the whole money into his own pocket. That means you are psychologically and physically empty. Because if you are not, you can't even give out a thought of such. So these are the kind of things that I was trying to bring out so that we should be able to go through them, re-examine ourselves, assess ourselves. So these people that are there, instead of you two, we should remember that how you make your bed, that is how you lie on, lie on it. You understand? If you make a perfect bed for everybody, everybody will be on that bed and will be happy. And they will sleep soundly yes because if it is if you make away with 15 billion remember that people are aware that you make away with 15 billion and you will not sleep because definitely they will come after you someday they may definitely come after you and that is exactly what we are witnessing today okay mr eric let me quickly there's um we there's a there's a Paragraph, the very first paragraph on page 67. Okay. I want us to just um, briefly go through that. Okay. Um, you said you killed to save your reputations mm -hmm. from the greed and selfish ambitious through one of the men who was hiding behind the backyard mm -hmm. of the land and powered by the so-called people whose, whom society is looking up to. Mm -hmm. No wonder Achebe sees his error and made mention of unfair treatment and social injustice which are very common in the society the social injustice and unfair treatment is unpredicted upon the killing of energetic men that hold the center of the society now you look at the picture now you could see that sometimes your intention is not to kill two people True. In the course of, okay, maybe you do something that won't discover that, okay, what or somebody was there as an eyewitness. Okay, this is what Mr. A has done. For you to be able to cover your evil deeds, you will talk, okay, let me silence this person, Mr. B, so that nobody will know of it. And as you silence Mr. B, it will continue because as you are trying to cover your evil, much more is about to unveil and as you start killing mr a mr b mr it will start it will continue 
because it is just like it's a chain. The evil people do evil is something as just as if as in being agitated to maybe people that used to smoke. Yeah. Let me just test one stick and see. Once it's, you it's, test, it's, it's intoxicating. It's intoxicating. Yes. And that is why it's very very common for our leaders sometimes who are occupying big position to leave the post. Because once you start testing the power, you feel the aroma of the power and you <laughs> want to be perceiving it every time. <laughs> you know, people wow. have direct pressure so much so in power that, you know, when they are going, when you see 10 vehicle company, just one single person. They, I, saw, I thought, I, at times I used to wonder, is it necessary? That is what sometimes I tend to appreciate our Western world. They are giving Obama's tenure. You could see that movement that he go along without no escort. But here you can see as if thousands of cars will just be following one person. But this is just a, a, a normal human being like you. All right. Okay, um, Mr. Eric, um, our time has really uh, elapsed um, that we can no longer take uh, any any readings again. So we'll take uh, in our next episode, we will continue with what we have started. Okay. And I also thank you very much for coming for this very uh, program. It is, uh, it is highly, highly advantageous to have you on ground. Thank and you very much. with many more books that you have written, I know we are going to get, you know, the big picture. Behind all I can words. assure you that <laughs> if you with many new books we arrive. Wow. And they will be interesting. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Eric. And thank you very much for watching Behind the Words. Without you, Behind the Words will never be the program it is. Don't forget to use the social media platform showing on your screen. You can reach us anytime. You can indicate your interest on this very show and we'll bring you to the studio. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.